In speaking with many of my friends and colleagues doing audio post-production in recent years, I frequently extolled the benefits of the Pro Tools-centric macro platform Soundflow. And in this video, I just wanted to demonstrate a few cool things that it can do specific to post-production for those who are curious how it might benefit their workflow. So one really cool thing that we can do with Soundflow that's particularly helpful for dialogue editing is quick audio suite plugin processing. If you look at the whole workflow involved for doing audio suite, there's actually quite a number of steps involved. So for example, if I have a, a plosive here on this clip that I wanna process via the Isotope RX Deplosive plugin, I first have to select that clip, then go to the audio suite menu, go to the noise reduction category, go through this long list of plugins, select the Deplosive plugin, I might make some adjustments, recall a track preset, make sure that it's in the right input and output mode, hit render, close the window, and that's quite a number of steps involved. So with Soundflow, I can actually do that entire process with one button push, it's really cool. So here in Soundflow, I have a macro that I've set up for this called Deplosive, and this just has one action that comes built in with Soundflow that's called open, render, and close audio suite plugin that just runs through that whole process that we just did. So all you have to do is identify the category, the plugin name, you can recall a preset, set the input and output mode. And to trigger this for now, I'm just gonna use a keyboard shortcut, control P. So back in Pro Tools, if I hit that keyboard shortcut, it goes through that entire process really cool, saves a lot of time, and is much easier on your hands. So where I think Soundflow starts to become really powerful is when you start to combine these macros and put them onto a stream deck, which almost kind of creates a custom user interface for a particular task or activity. If you've never seen it before, a stream deck is like a custom keyboard with little LED screens that we can use to trigger macros instead of having to remember keyboard shortcuts. And so we can have for a particular task like dialogue editing, we can collect a series of macros that might be useful. Here on the first three, I have set up some Isotope RX plugins useful for dialogue editing. This is gonna be the one that we just set up, the um, Deplosive plugin. So instead of remembering the control P trigger that we used before, if we just hit that button, that's gonna run through that process. Um, here next to it, I have the mouth declick, the um, D Russell plugin. Here, I have it to open up the um, spectral editor that's now available via ARA in Pro Tools. So if I hit this button, it's gonna open up that docked editor. And if, for example, I wanted to process via spectral repair that little bit, I hit process, and then the button next to it is going to close the docked editor. So really cool, really helpful and useful if you have particular tasks that you're running through, whether it's dialogue editing or sound design or session prep, as we'll see in a minute here. So another way that Soundflow can really help is in doing session prep. When we bring in an AAF file from an editor, we'll need to go through clip by clip and drag down each of them into our session template onto the desired track. So here, I have to hold down the control key in order to maintain the timeline position, and I'll drag this down to the dialogue track. What we can do in Soundflow is to create macros that will automatically bring selected clips down to the corresponding tracks in our template. So I have here a macro that I've created, which is going to, first it's gonna get the name of the track that has the clip. We're going to cut the clip that we have selected go down to the corresponding track in our template. In this case, it's gonna be the dialogue one track. It's going to paste the clip, and then it's going to return to the track that we had selected here at the beginning. So, and what we could do is kind of create a custom user interface like we did before. This is gonna be a very simple example with just a couple clips and a couple tracks but you can well imagine how this is going to scale up to more complex sessions. And here, I'm going to have just the dialogue one track with this button here. This is gonna be the sound effect one track. And this, this is gonna be the music track. And this is going to automatically bring the selected clips down to these corresponding tracks in our template. 
So I have here first just selected that those dialog clips, and instead again of dragging it down, I'm just gonna press that button and it's going to automatically bring it into our session template. I'll do the same thing here with this sound effect track, and then the same thing with this music clip here. So much easier, if you've done this at all, you can see how much um, less fatiguing and time-saving that this will be. So the next thing I want to look at are macros that use memory locations. And the first one is super simple. It's just moving the insertion to the next or previous memory location. So I've created a keyboard shortcut for this shift right arrow, and that'll move the insertion to the next memory location. If I hit shift left arrow, that'll go to the previous memory location. Otherwise, I'd have to click on this little diamond here, which seems impossibly small on the marker ruler and could potentially actually knock it out of place by trying to click it. Now, I should say that this is something that you actually can do as of Pro Tools 2023.12 inside of Pro Tools. If you go to the setup menu here to this new keyboard shortcut, uh, my menu here. This is actually a command that's available to assign a keyboard shortcut. Here, go to next memory location and go to previous memory location, which I've assigned again with the shift right and shift left arrow. Previously, you weren't able to do this um, inside Pro Tools, and it was the thing initially that sold me on a Soundflow subscription, given how frequently I use memory locations. But where this can start to become even more useful, which you can do in Soundflow, is you can start adding other actions to this. And one of the most commonly um, used macros that, I, that I'll use involving memory locations is cutting a selected clip, going to the next or previous memory location, and then pasting, which I have assigned to the keyboard shortcut, control left arrow. So that'll just bring the selected clip to the previous memory location. So very useful for lining up at the beginning of a particular spot that we might have identified with a memory location here. We can also kind of do faux sync points, like if we're doing sound design, rather than a sync point being assigned to a particular clip, we can just create in the timeline a marker, and now we can align clips to that memory location very easily just using this keyboard shortcut. Again, the one I've created is control right arrow. So very useful. So the next thing I wanna look at are macros that are specifically helpful for sessions where we have a lot of different spots that are separated by memory location. And I'm not gonna go into detail so much in terms of how these are made because they're more complex, but this can kind of just serve as a demonstration for how this might be useful in situations like this. And again, we have a very simple template example here with just a couple of spots, but I've worked on many sessions that have hundreds of, of spots down the timeline. So you can again, kind of scale up to imagine how this might be useful. So the first one is just to copy this spot down to the next marker. So if I use this button here, copy to next marker, it's going to copy that automatically down. The next one, the one right next to it, is going to repeat that process on down the timeline for however many markers that we have. So the next thing we can do is use a macro in order to create mixes for many different spots down the timeline in one go. And this becomes more useful as you imagine potentially dozens or hundreds of spots in our timeline that we're having to deliver mixes for. So it would be time intensive if we printed each, each spot one by one. And if we do an offline bounce here, we're gonna have one unbroken file clip that's going to be the length of our session here. So one thing that we can do is if we use either the video clip or the music track in this case, that it is that is the exact length of the spot that we're trying to deliver. In this case, it's 30 seconds long, as we can see here. We can use that as kind of a guide in order to trim this unbroken clip so that we have mixes that are the exact length that we need. So I'll use this button here, this repeat trimmer button, which is going to bring up this uh, prompt here for asking me how many spots that we're trimming. I'll hit four, and it's automatically going to trim this unbroken file to be the exact length of our session here, 30 seconds long. So now I'll drag these clips down to the print track and delete that track that we created by doing the offline bounce. So now that we have all of these mixes created, 
I have a macro that's automatically going to name each of them. And what it's going to do is it's going to pull the title from the memory location for each spot. Here I just have first, second, third, and fourth, but you can imagine this being an ad ID or something like that. And then it's going to use that text and it's going to add a time and date token along with underscore stereo mix. And for this, I'm actually using another uh, macro utility program called Keyboard Maestro, which is really great for text manipulation. So with the cursor aligned with the first memory location in front of this first mix here, I'm going to hit this finish repeat button, it's, which is going to again prompt me for the number of spots that we have. I'm gonna hit four, and it's going to automatically name each of the mixes that we have. Very useful. If you imagine that we had 100 spots down the timeline, you can imagine how much labor this is going to save. Very, very cool. So the last thing we'll be looking at are macros that help with snapshot automation. Especially for long-form projects, there can be many situations where it's helpful to have multiple different plugin settings across one track rather than having multiple tracks with different settings. And for this, we're actually just going to use two macros which are going to kind of assist with this whole process. So this first button here, this DX1 auto macro, what it's going to do is it's going to open a window configuration that has all of the plugins here on the dialog track, in this case, this DX Revive and Pro-Q4. It's also going to bring up the automation window and put the automation mode into preview. So if I press that button, it's going to do all of that which enables me then to make a different setting here on the plugins. Here I'll plus some of the low, I'll turn up the DX Revive, and then I just have to hit this process button. And what that's going to do is it's going to write automation as if I'm pressing this manual write button here. It's going to disable the preview and it's going to revert back to the previous window configuration, which will close out the windows, the plugin windows and the automation window like that. So that's all I had to do. So next I'll do the same thing if I wanna process this clip here. I'll press the DX1 auto. It's gonna bring up all the plugins, put it in a preview. I'll again do a different setting. I'll turn up the high end here like that. If I hit process, it's going to process that. If I go then to the window configuration, I can see the different plugin settings that I have here now for each of those different clips. So super useful just to be able to consolidate this down and simplify it into two buttons on a stream deck. No $40,000 control surface required. <laughs> um, super useful. It really speeds up the process a lot. So there you go. That was five-ish uses of Soundflow in post-production. These are things that I commonly use that can be adapted for different workflows. If you have any comments or questions, though, specific to any of the things I've covered, please give me a shout. And thank you for watching.